So how can we fight it back against terrorism? Because it is without a doubt the number one issue in this country today. Joining me now, Representative Marsha Blackburn, Congresswoman. Uh, I want to ask you, A, first about what happened in Los Angeles today. Uh, in a lot of debate, of course, with uh, maybe they were overly cautious, cautious to a fault, particularly since New York got the same, same exact threat and decided it was a hoax right off. Yeah, and I think we'll reserve judgment until we have all the facts in. And as you're looking at this, you do see that they moved forward, they made this decision. Maybe all the information was not in on that. But I certainly can understand the nature of making that decision with what they have just been through. And Charles, I think looking at this, you realize why national security is now the number one issue in the presidential elections. People want to make certain that we're going to be safe. And I tell you what, about four months ago, national security became the number one issue with women across the entire spectrum. And so it just shows the national trend is following that. Why, why four months ago with women? Was there a particular event that, that propelled that? I think it is just that moms want to make certain that their children are going to be safe when they go to school, when they work, uh, when you go to ball games, when you go to events. And as you heard more about ISIS, as you saw how they were metastasizing through the Horn of Africa, you watched the different uh, actions that were taking place, the previous beheadings, the videos, uh, the lack of, con of really, I guess, awareness or focus that the president had. I mean, and he's become a fearful leader in this. And people are looking for decisiveness and for a resolute nature that says, you better know this, we're going to hunt you down and we're going to destroy you and we're going to destroy your networks. Well, That's the message that needs to be communicated to all of these terrorist groups. Well, on that, on that note then, and using, you know, let me borrow your word resolute. What can we get out of Washington, D.C.? Can we get Congress maybe to do something to force the president's hand? I read somewhere late today, before I came to the studio, there was uh, someone thinking about pre presenting legislation that will call ISIS a, a war combatant. We're fighting them like a, a police you know, sort of thing instead of a military thing. Yes. Is there a way that we can get Congress to push President Obama to get off of this sort of, I don't want to, you know, I don't know what it is, what, what sort of empathy yes. he has for these okay. people? Exactly. Let me give you three things. Number one, what you're talking about that, naming your enemy. Yes, radical Islamic extremism. These jihadis want to kill us. We need to go get them first. And what you're talking about is the push that some have for a new AUMF. The AUMF is the authorization for use of military force. And there are many of our members, especially on our side of the aisle, that are looking at that. Second thing that could be done, the president could sign the bills that we have passed on the visa waiver program, which will keep individuals who have been into some of these countries, Syria, Iraq, some of the countries from coming here through program, uh, visa waivers that we have with other countries, especially the EU. The, third, the second also includes the Syria bill, which blocks Syrian and Iraqi refugees from coming until we have a program in place to vet them. The third component that could be done is the Sessions Blackburn language. We have filed it as a standalone bill in the House. This deals with the Office of Refugee Resettlement and says, freeze their money until the president puts in place a refugee resettlement plan, until we know what it's going to cost us, until DHS gives us an accounting of individuals who have come through that program, and we know who since 2001 has participated in either terrorist or criminal activity, and we know what ORR right. has spent on well, this. So those are three things the president could do today if he wanted to pick up that blooming pen and phone that he has had sitting over there in the White House for all these months and do something about this. But that requires resolve and sending a message to these extremists that we are going to destroy them and we are going to destroy their networks and we're not going to wait on it, we're going to do it today. How about that naming and killing the enemy? Our kids cannot be running around in schools afraid 
because the president is, right. is, is worried about a public relations d disaster. You're uh, right. Keep pushing, Representative Blackburn. I'm telling you right now, it's not, it's forget about the lines are blurred in America. All Americans want you guys to keep pushing. It's the top issue yes, out there. We do. appreciate it. Thank you very yes, much. Thank you. Well, domestic terror, it is the number one issue. So the question is, should, should the U.S. actually reestablish the government's authority to collect phone records? We're talking about that meta, metadata stuff without a warrant. Tweet me your thoughts. I'm at CV Payne. We'll be right back.